and putting up all the classes. I just realized during first block today that they were posted as a user event, which means you couldn't see them anyway. But now, if you go to the calendar view, you should see the, all the classes I've recorded on there. So if, like today, you want to re-look at the chapter one review, first block is already posted, and then I'll post your block as well when we're done. Okay, so this review is using the PowerPoint that came with the textbook. There are some outdated slides that I need to redo because the pictures are old, but the idea is still the same. So um, I went through the test before you guys came in just to make sure that I hit all the points and found a couple points that I had missed, which is why I wanted to go through the PowerPoint to make sure there's nothing that you go, I've never heard of that before, Mr. Poole, and you just had it on the test. Okay. So we've already talked a lot, a lot of this. Computers require hardware and software. We need to know the difference between hardware and software. Hardware are those physical things that I can touch and feel. And software are the set of instructions that tells hardware what to do. Their Microsoft Office, their GIMP, their Audacity, their Photoshop, their our operating system, those are all software. And without those, hardware can be done, right? And Although we didn't say this, you should know this from computer one, all letters and numbers are stored in the computer as a series of bits. And eight bits makes up a byte, and we measure capacity in bytes, or kilobytes, or megabytes, gigabytes, or, gigabytes, or terabytes. And if you don't know those things, you will have a hard time matching them on the test. So if you don't know a kilo is a thousand, a mega is a million, a giga is a billion, and a tera is a trillion, you should have that in your notes. So you don't go and say, which one was what? Okay. So, said this a number of times. I guarantee you'll have it on the test. This is straight out of the Microsoft uh, A plus certification exam. Two input devices are the keyboard and the mouse. The two output devices are the monitor and the printer. Okay, you should know what those are. The majority of processing takes place on the CPU. And then the CPU has primary storage, which is temporary, called RAM, and has permanent storage, which is its secondary, which we primarily see as a hard disk drive. Some of these I'm going to go past the slide. Um, you guys already know where the self-assessment stuff is. We need to remember a chapter that we take for every class, and we talk in the first class about the ICANN statements and the fact that as we come to a new chapter, you guys should be reading the ICANN statements, and that's what all those self assessments are for, to see that you know what the ICANNs are, and that's why I have you review those all the time. Okay, so we have hardware used for input and output. Input devices are the keyboard and mouse. Output devices are the monitor and keyboard. Okay, all the hardware pretty much. You said keyboard is output. What did I say? You said keyboard is output. Input, that's keyboard, right. mouse, output, yeah. monitor, and printer. Okay. Yeah, monitor. Is that what I said? No, you said keyboard. I thought that's what I said. Output. Okay, I know what came out of my head. I don't know what came out of my head. Okay, so pretty much all the hardware is inside the case. We can have external stuff. We can have external hard drives. We can have external flash drives. Most of the hardware we're talking about is inside the case. The motherboard is our primary circuit board. Then we have the CPU and the CPU chipset, which is one of the things that was on the test. I was like, ooh, well, I don't remember talking about chipsets. We're going to talk about that today. And we've got our storage devices that we've talked about uh, before. So some terms that I may or may not have used. I use the word expansion card. Book uses the word interface. Expansion cards are those cards that I can add onto a motherboard to expand the capability of the of the motherboard, like network cards, video cards, something like a modem. Uh, we can't do expansion cards on a laptop, but we can expand the capability of a laptop through USB. There's lots of devices that you can do through USB anymore that do the same thing. There are USB video cards, there are USB modems, there are USB network cards. But when we're talking expansion cards in general, we're talking about those things that plug into these expansion slots on the motherboard permanently make, expand the capability that came with the motherboard itself, okay? We talked the other day about the electrical system or the power supply unit, and we'll kind of leave over that and we get to that point again. And then we talked about the instructions that are stored on the motherboard. The instructions are called BIOS, yes. or the basic input output system, and it's stored in ROM. 
The program is stored in ROM. The things we do with the program are stored in RAM. Okay? CMOS RAM is where we store the configuration settings that we change in BIOS. Okay? So when the computer starts, it loads BIOS from some chip like this one, where the data instructions for BIOS are stored, the program BIOS is stored, and then when we make changes in BIOS, which we're going to do today, that's why we have four different BIOSes set up in here. When we make those changes and hit save, they're saved in CMOS RAM because we're making, we're writing to them and we can't write to ROM. Okay? And those are stored and saved by this electrical power, this power here, by this battery. Without the battery, the CMOS RAM is cleared every single time we unplug the computer. Therefore, it says take the time not to set up and stuff. We'll talk more about, well, I'll give you more opportunities to ask a question if you have another question. Okay. We need, when we have hardware, some way for the CPU to communicate with devices, and we're going to talk about that specific kind of software that makes hardware work in Chapter 2. But software is what makes those devices do things, okay, and we have to have electricity to power it. All electricity for the computer comes through the power supply. The power supply supplies all electricity for all devices in the computer. All devices in the computer are powered by the power supply. I just said the same thing three times three different ways. Okay. Now, I said the other day in class that some of them re receive power through the motherboard, but they don't but receive power, power from by. the motherboard. You understand the difference there? Yes. This is plugged into this, and if it's plugged into there, it's getting power, but it's getting power from the power supply. I'm not saying that's a test question that a lot of people get wrong. Okay? You, nothing gets power from the motherboard. They get it from the power supply through the motherboard, or in the case of hard drives and senior ROMs, they get it directly from the power supply because it's plugged in directly to those things that require a lot of power. Okay. So we've got popular input devices, the keyboard and the mouse, or popular output devices, the monitor and the printer. We've got that really old looking picture which is in a couple slides. Oh, again, let me let me erase this so I can write on it all over again since I read on the first block. <coughs> we need to be able to differentiate between those things that come on the computer and those things that are added. Yeah. The things that come on the computer are called on board. In other words, they're on the motherboard. Okay. So if I say, if I re refer to something as an on board device, those are the things that line up along the back of the PC as you're standing up because they're on the motherboard. Okay. Those things that are are perpendicular to the motherboard, those things that plug into these expansion slots, are called expansion devices. So these are all expansion ports. Or expansion devices. These are all onboard devices. So if you saw a picture and it said, uh, I'm plugging this into here, is this an onboard device or an expansion device? If it's plugged in up here on the motherboard, it's onboard. It's Can you say here. the expansion devices first because the motherboard said you yes. had this so you want In the case of if I had a picture with this, actually this is a bad mother, bad example because there's no video card on here, but if there was a video card up here, let's pretend there was, I'm going to color this in blue, there, that's a video card now, and I said, would you plug it in here at spot A or spot B, the answer is always expansion first, because you, you added it, and the motherboard makes an assumption that that's what you wanted to use, okay? Which is not to say that you can't use both, some will let you use both. But primary is always going to assume that it's the expansion device. Okay? Here's my old picture of an old monitor and an old printer, because really those are really old and the kind of plugs are old, but again, you'll see this type of question on the exam. Oh! I did Okay. So I, I meant to erase that. I should have just Control 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 L. L. That would have been better. That would have been faster than my jumping in front of the board. <laughs> so we've got two kinds of plugins for devices. We've got PS2, which is what these are called, 
which is the circular one with six pins. How many pins? Six pins and a little notch out there. Okay, and then we have USB, which is all the newer stuff. And PS2 is really, for, to a large extent, going away. But in a PS2, I have a keyboard and a mouse, and they have primary colors associated with them. What is the primary color associated with the keyboard plug? Purple. Purple. Okay. That's what I just erased. And mouse is green. Okay. And I say primary because that's true. 95% of the time, HP had to be different. Use orange for a while on their keyboards. I don't know if it's true. But they were they were just weird. In fact, they were so weird that they used orange on their keyboard and purple on their mouse for a while. And everybody else used something else. In fact, I don't think it's true of this one. Let's look. No, they are still purple and green. I have to look at it. So then we had USB, USB, all plugs in the same. There are different speeds. There are USB 1.1, there's USB 2.0, which is 50 times faster. And now we have three USB 3.0, which actually I don't know how much times faster it is. We only have three ports of those in the entire school. And I haven't ever looked it up. I should have the expansion port. Yeah. So, but we need to know how these input devices are plugged in. I don't know. I don't know where 1.0 went. It was 1.0. It's like Windows started out 3.1. 3.1. Where is 1, 2, 3.0? I don't know. First Windows, much stuff that was Windows 3.1. The two other ones that they Obviously, they, were, they had those, and they must have been the failure. You know, it's like um, how many versions of, of uh, WD 40? There were 39 previous versions of WD that didn't work before you made WD 40. Everybody know that little bit? Obviously. That was his 40th attempt. Hello! And that was the one that worked for his water displacement formula. Oh, that's so, that's so. Tell my, I only put on here, not sure if I don't want to be disturbed. the name. Really? You sent a student over? Good? Yeah, anyway. Okay. So, uh, and then on, this is the one that's really, obviously we haven't had this kind of monitors. Well. We have monitors and printers are output devices. We really don't use the 25 pen anymore. We have, we have USB or network printers. There's almost no other way to have a network printer anymore. And with the video, we've got VGA, which really makes up the majority of ours. And then we also have the white GBI connectors as well are the digital video input connectors, which I had one sitting there. I must have moved it somewhere when I was talking for a block. But oh. most of ours are just like that, but then we use USB for our primary output devices. Inside the case, we have all of our majority of our other components. We have our hard drive, CD-ROMs, uh, flash drives for storage. We've got a power supply, a certain board, and I've already talked about most of those things. So I'm going to go on past this one, but this would be a good example of two different video Always use options. Always use this one. If I say which one when I plug it into, it's got to be down here. Right? Okay, the motherboard is also called the main board. It holds the CPU where most processing take pla takes place, and everything else communicates with the CPU through the motherboard. And all those things, I've said this before, are either installed directly on or linked by cable. They all are connected. Uh, and the motherboard for its primary storage uses either RAM or cache memory, both of which are memory. But cache memory is on the CPU and RAM is on the motherboard. But that's the CPU's primary storage. So I, if I say the word primary storage, I'm talking memory. If I say permanent storage, I'm talking hard drive. Hard drive okay? Because so don't get your P's confused. Primary is memory, but it's temporary. And it's it is hard drive. It's just written. Right. Okay, so we've already talked about this again. We've got our ROM, where our BIOS is stored. And we've got our RAM, where our, confi our, our, then we've got our CMOS RAM, where our configuration is stored. Here's the 
inside of a computer, show the motherboard, and all the wires hooked up to the motherboard inside there. Okay? So, this is a test question that you will see. It's as basic as it can get on the parts of the motherboard. You must be able to identify the back panel, where the CPU goes, where the memory goes, and where the expansion cards are. When we are in chapter four, you're gonna need to, I'm gonna need to be able to hold this up to Max and say, where is the SATA zero connector? Obviously, it's like Okay, and he needs to be able to say, well, it's right there, Mr. Poole, okay? <laughs> right now, you don't need to know that. You need to know the very basics, that this is the back panel, this is where the processor goes, this is where the memory goes, these are expansion slots. You will see a matching question like that. And will it be like circle? Look? It'll be something like that, with, but it won't actually say back. Yeah, it'll see like uh, A, B, I know C, you remember D, and then you'll match them. Places are what? Back. What? Back. That's what? Back. Back. That's the back. It's the back panel connector. The onboard. <laughs> the onboard or back panel connector. Right, you know how those, that's where the video oh, device would be plugged that we wouldn't use. Yeah, it's the back of the computer, computer, right? It's the back panel. This is called the back panel. Oh, now it's the back This is a bad picture. It, now it's hence the back. It's the back of the PC. Yeah. We call it the front panel, but we stick it on the front of the PC. Right? No, now it's right. Okay. okay. But now you understand. Flat just looks like what okay. the wall is. This here, is it easier if I do this? Okay. Let's see, it says the back panel connector. Ah, I see it now. Okay. It won't have this on there, by the way. It won't, it won't have like the ASM on the You just have to name it. Yeah, like, you have to match it, okay? <coughs> so, <laughs> one thing I did not talk about in class was the chipset, okay? We did talk about the CPU. We didn't talk about the chipset on the motherboard, which controls the flow of data instructions to and from the CPU, okay? So, I've got a, I've got a uh, motherboard. I've got a CPU, and I've got, I'm drawing very rudimentary, okay? I've got a bus route, and I've got another bus route around my CPU. Information going from the CPU to certain bus stops yeah, I got it. to pick up and deliver information, okay? And there are two bus routes. There's one called the north route. Is that really what it's called? Yes. And there's one called the south route. And the driver of the route is called the chipset. So there's a north chipset. We'll call his name Chip and his last name Set. And on the other route, there's his twin brother, and he's south chipset. Okay, that is Set. S E T. I spelled it wrong. Okay. So there's two bus routes, the north bus route and the south, the south bus route. Controlling that bus route is north chipset and south chipset. Okay? There's only two stops on the north route because that's the posh, posh students that pay extra to get back quicker to school. Okay? So on the north. Okay, there's only two stops. And the two stops are memory and video. Okay? There's the only two stops. This bus goes around and around this route, just stopping at two places and delivering information back to the CPU. Okay? So that's the good bus stop. You want to ride on that one because you just get on, and if you're memory, you make one more stop and then you get back to school. Okay? However, South Chipset, that's the kid's South and Start track. I don't know if that's where you can or where this name came from, but we'll just call it that way. Everything else is on the south, okay? So I got my USB, I got my hard drive, I got my flash drives, I got my floppy disk drive, I got my CD-ROM, I got, uh, what else, there's so many things up there. I got my keyboard, I got my mouse. Every other input <laughs> to the CPU, every instruction that comes in and out from the CPU goes the south route the other than memory, memory video. video. video because so, they have so much more data. Just memory. And they need to enter information so much faster. Because the CPU, right, relies on memory as its primary storage, so it needs to get stuff back and forth real fast. And things happen really fast with video, so it needs to go back and forth real fast, which is why there's only two things on the route. And on the south route is everything else, because you know how fast is he really moving that mouse? Right? If it's going around the route at 1.3 billion times a second. 
uh, I'm sorry, 1.3 million times a second, maybe. That, it's still faster. You, you know, your mouse movement's not going to get ratchety because of the slow bus, stuff, right? Okay, but you might change the speed of your video. Okay, so these, this is the purpose of the chipset. There's a north chipset that controls that information and a south chipset that controls that information. And when I look at a motherboard, I can see which one's which. Which one do you think is going to be hotter, north or south? South. New. No. North. Because it requires so much more information. No. The north chipset is always the one under a heat sink. And always the, the one under a heat sink. And the south one's right there. It doesn't make that much. They get hot. Is, our, is it? That There's my CPU. There's my north bridge, north chipset. There's a south chipset. And this one, same thing. There's a CPU, north chipset, south chipset. And all the information goes through the CPU. And if I can see it from the other side, there's the chipset. And there's the chipset. You can see all the little dots right there where it connects. Little dots where it connects. Yeah. I could not go underneath this and diagnose and tell you also all those wires. But everything goes from a CPU to a chipset to a device, CPU, chipset to a device. So I did not mention the chipsets last time and I needed to. Okay? And now, where'd I go? Okay, so chipsets or microchips on the motherboard control the flow of data instructions to and from the CPU. Okay, and I just said this, Northbridge is memory and video, Southbridge is everything else for the South chips. CPU is underneath some kind of a big heat sink because it gets really hot. And I know I mentioned this in one of the classes, we'll watch a video when we get to this chapter of a CPU blowing up and actually going yeah, through the table. Yeah, exactly. Okay, we'll watch that video because it used to be they weren't smart enough to cool themselves off, they just blew up. Okay, now they're smart enough to get slower and slower and slower if they get hotter and hotter and hotter. So you've got a computer that's full of gunk, it will run slow because it's dirty, because it can't get airflow to it, so it can't cool itself down, so it's gonna run slow. So if you've got so that's time, how you get down there cleaning it all the Right. Because the last thing we want is to put in a computer that's full of dirt, it's gonna run slow because we put in a dirty PC. Okay? So at home, if you ever have a chance to open up your PC and plug it, blow it out, it's good for it. And we watch a video of a guy on how he does this. What about the computers uh, that are like takes that cycle? And that's how he blows up. What? Because like our my computer is like the whole and one. Like it's on the monitor. Like it's hard to blow up. But on the good side, it also doesn't normally get as dirty because there's not as much dirt up here. A lot of people, most people, put their computer where on the ground underneath their desk, where all the junk is. All the dirt and all your dead skin and everything's falling and all the dust balls are. Really right. Okay. That's also your screen. Never go to sheds. You're the same sheds. You're not just sheds. Okay, so then we got our memory slots. We can even identify those on our motherboard. They're our primary storage, but they're also temporary. And this is what the memory slot looks like. And obviously, I've held up a number of motherboards to show you those as well. The memory we, look, we, we use today is all DDR. We'll talk about more, but it seems for double data rate. It has one little notch in it. The older SD RAM had two notches, which I used to have to instruct the students on how to do, but really we don't have a single stick of SD RAM left in the district. I have sold it all back to a company that buys by old brand to buy new RAM. So our primary storage, prime, <laughs> primary, <laughs> I got it, primary, but also temporary. Storage is RAM, and really, here's a picture of the different kind of RAM stuff. Oh, here's a picture of the different kind of RAMs. Of those, we don't use SIMs at all anymore. They're all DIMMs, all DDR. And DDR went from DDR to DDR2 to DDR3. And Mr. Anderson said DDR4 was just released. All we have is two and three. Okay. Which you can't physically look at and see. We talked about how to see the amount of memory that's in our computer by using the Windows pause break button, which does not work when Spark software is running. So if you did your Windows pause break, you would get this screen that shows how much RAM 
is installed in your computer and how much is usable. We talked about how video can steal RAM from us in class if we've got a bad video card. And we talked about how RAM is temporary, hard drives, flash drives are permanent, but they're also secondary. Okay. CPU only uses and stores stuff in temporary or it's primary storage, and when they're not being used, they're kept in permanent. So it gets swapped over there. But the CPU doesn't read from there. It has to be loaded into RAM and the CPU to read it. That's why the more RAM we have, the faster our computer tends to run. Hard drives. Although it's too late. You've already seen what I wrote on that. Here's our hard drive. Here's our hard drive. It is the only sealed component in our computer. Sealed meaning that no air goes into or out of a hard drive. It is the only completely sealed component. A single speck of dirt or speck of dust will ruin this because it spins at a minimum of 5,400 revolutions per minute. And it trail can be as fast as, they make faster than this, but our fastest one is 10,000 revolutions per minute. And a little piece of dirt on this sucker it's going at 10,000 revolutions per minute. That is really fast. The sucker is spinning fast, right? So that one's like, no. it, yes, this is not sealed. Like this is open for your viewing it's pleasure. Okay, but if you get a little speck of dirt on there when it's reading, it will totally trash it out really quickly. So this is totally sealed. It has a little spot on it, right? There's this one right here that actually fluctuates in and out as you take this through pressure changes. Okay, but no air goes into or out of this. It is not filtered. Okay, only sealed component. You might see that on the test. Okay, if it gets really hot, it can fail. In fact, the number that you need to remember is 185 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperatures above 185 degrees Fahrenheit, electrical components fail. And I've got a little piece of software that we talked about first block that we never got back to that I can use to look and see what the temperatures are inside of PCs. Here's my three hottest PCs. I've got one that's 158. 154, 151, and those are the middle school number 24, 25, and number 12. Those are the fast, are the hottest three computers in the district, and I may want to go and take a look at those and see why. Maybe the fan's not running, or maybe the fan's plugged up with dirt, but for some reason those are in the red, and I can also see... Where did they get in the red? Yeah, it must be. I don't, I don't, I don't really know. I'm just watching. Yeah, it must be. These go at, it must be at 135 to 150. These are in the yellow. And that's the CPU temperature. I can also see the hard drive temperature down here someplace. There we go. There's the, but that, here's the system temperature. And I can also see hard drives. So let's look and see which of the five. This is inside the case measured by the motherboard. So uh, Cindy Hoax is the fastest one, or the hottest case inside the case where motherboards are really hot. And then we've got a cafeteria machine at 24, 25, and 12 again are the next three hottest. So that means that possibly what we need to do with those, look, that's it. It's all the way up at 185 degrees. That's in these. That's in these machine. So, what was machine. I told her we need to swap out our machine before. Um, she's got an AMD, which are hotter. I put additional cooling fans in hers. But what do they do down there? The air conditioning's on, and they put little heaters down by their feet. And what, what is the CPU? So hers is right at the limit where things could go wrong for her. And then I can also look at hard drive temperatures down here someplace. Let's see. All these stats are gathered by this program called Newt, which is awesome, which is actually free. Let's see, maybe it's under here. I know that I can see it someplace. Oh, no, that's Mr. Boxer. Good Boxer. It's running kind of hot. 
And then, yeah, this is an internal check on the health that it can tell me whether it thinks a hard drive is going to go bad. So all these say OK. And then up here, you've got two that say they're bad. I actually check this one out. When I click on this, it tells me the smart data for this drive itself. It's not really that bad. It just means it's had to relocate sectors because it's got some bad sectors. And it says, well, don't use this one anymore. Of the bad things, that's the least bad, bad thing. If the number is really high, which the number is not really high, then uh, that would be really bad. And this one, I think, was the same way. I think I've looked at this one. It's really the subject of chapter five. Same thing. It's just a re re relocated sector count. This one's actually a little worse shape than the other one. Uh, this is actually not mine right here. This is um, the DVR recorder machine that security cameras for the data. Down and off. Back, back in the, um, yeah, and then this one is the MPS machine in Mrs. 309. So, but that's a good thing if I have time, it would be really good for me to go and swap out these two drives since it already says they're going bad before they actually do. That's why this, this software actually is free, but you can, to get all the data that we get from, we had to pay them. Nice at all. So you said we need to memorize the 185. You better know the 185. Temperatures above what do hardware components fail? Above 185. So in cities, it's the same right there at the 185 degree point. So that can't be too big. Okay, we've got a couple different ways hard drives connect, which is determined by our motherboard, which we'll talk about more in chapter four, and in the hardware or the hard drive chapter itself but the newer connections are up to five times faster than the older connections. We have secondary storage, which is permanent, like CD-ROMs, hard drives, flash drives, and that information gets swapped back and forth from memory because the CPU cannot process information on secondary storage. That's why it says cannot be processed by the CPU until it's copied into primary storage, which is RAM. And there's a bunch of different connections. I'm not going to go through this because this is really not this chapter. Then we've got our, our power supply. I'm going to actually just delete all those. There we go. Then we've got our CD-ROMs, which connect up the same, which are also secondary storage. We talked about video cards, with that, which have graphics processing units and have their own memory on it, which are really good to have nice ones because they take load off the CPU and they make our system run far better process graphics for them. And we have other expansion cards that we can add that expand on these back panel onboard connections that give us new stuff or better stuff than what our motherboard came with. And we're going to talk about this later in chapter four, the data path size, but the system clock I did forget to talk about on the boot sequence. Okay, So on the boot sequence, we talked about when we, we push the power button, it checks for a good power. So what I, what I forgot, though, is the spot between getting a good power signal and the post is where this, the uh, motherboard clock starts to generate clock pulses. And when we talked about the north bus and the south bus, all that inform information moves around the, the bus at a certain rate. And that rate is determined by the clock on the motherboard. It's, and this is an old picture, because they don't look like this anymore. Okay. This, this is an old picture of a motherboard clock, but whatever that pulse is at is the speed of the bus. Again, we'll talk about more about it in chapter four, but you need to know that that system clock starts to generate pulses, and whatever that speed is, like a current motherboard might be 1200 megahertz, that's the speed of stuff that's transmitted around. 1200 megahertz being 1200 million times a second is the cycle of information around that. Okay, so the clock pulse controls how fast the how fast it. and it all is synchronized, it all goes together. Okay. Okay. Right, 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 right. After it gets a good clock a power signal, it starts to generate pulses and then it does the power on self test. And after the power on self test it does the bio. So I forgot to add that in there and totally uh, 
skipped it entirely. And then we talked about our expansion cards and the fact that we can add those in there to expand the capability of the motherboard. And again, these are really basic. We're going to get much deeper into these in chapter four when we talk about motherboards and all the different kinds of expansion card slots. Okay. But they allow us to expand the capability of the motherboard past what it originally was designed for. And we have all kinds of stuff. This one's a picture of a modem card, but network cards, video cards, USB expansions, USB 3.0, FireWire cards, all kinds of stuff. And you can tell the difference because they're the ones that run perpendicular to the onboard devices on the back. Those are what the expansion cards are on, on a normal PC. Okay? And then we've got our power, which takes alternating current turns it into direct current for our electronic devices and it lowers the voltage down to 3.35 12 volts from 115 volts coming from the wall. That's the purpose of our power supply. Everything gets its power from the power supply. Everything gets its power from the power supply. Everything gets its power from the power supply. Power supply, okay. And all these are our voltages, 3.35 and 12. We'll talk more about that in chapter 3 when we start learning how to compute voltage and wattage. We'll talk more about what those things are in chapter 3. Again, chapter 1 is the introduction to all these things that we get much deeper into as we go into the other chapters. Chapter 2 is software only. We're going to talk about operating systems and drivers and, and um, install some. We're going to put uh, temporary hard drives into our laptops and install a different operating system and then put your laptop hard drive right back in and stuff. We talked about this, where all those components are the other day, and we talked about the boot process the other day. And, and spe specifically, Dell's. We've got an HP 
and we've got a very, very generic one. Just so you know, this one is as generic as it comes. You missed it. You missed it. Missed it. Delete F1, F2. 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 You missed it again. I got the I just turned this. I just turned it. Oh, good. On board. I'm just trying to say it's really fast. Hard drive is not delete F1, F2. 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 At the same time, you're going like this. And what kind of computer is yours? What kind of computer is yours? No. No, what kind of computer is yours? Yours is a? HP. And what did we say is the only key to get it in on HP? Which is why I put an HP out here. What was HP? It's delete F1, F2 F10. on every computer except, except for, for HP, HP, HP which is F10. I don't have an IDE hard drive. I don't have an onboard SAT card. OK, so look and see what kind of information you can find out about your CPU, your memory, how you change the boot order, how you set the date and time. Those are the common things. Oh, and how to set power. Like, can I you set it so I'm actually turns on? Two memory cards that I can see. Uh, okay, so how much total memory is two gig? What can I see about my system? Let's see, processor. How fast is my processor? How much cache is on my processor? 3.20 gigahertz. Processor bus speed is 800 megahertz. That's so and much. That's speed. that's the that's, that's the other board bus speed. Chipset. Right, so the motherboard's going at 800 megahertz, but the system's going at 3.2 gigahertz. Yeah. Okay, and that's called the motherboard bottleneck. Obviously. Okay, because the motherboard's going how much slower? How much slower is that? That's like a million. How much slower? Give me a, how many times slower? Oh, God. Is it 800 than 3200 megahertz? Is like Eight times four is 32. It's going four times slower. You're right, right? Yeah. yeah. So four times slower. The motherboard is four times slower than the CPU. So that most likely the CPU is waiting for information all the time from the motherboard. Yeah. And when you've got a mother or a CPU that's that much faster than your motherboard, which happens. That's why it's called the motherboard bottleneck. Okay. So yours is a 2.4 gigahertz processor, 2400. And you, this one shows cache totally different. It shows L1, L2, and L3, which you will learn about in chapter 4. But it's got three processors, so it's got each processor is 128 and 512, and then they all share, that's why it says that, it that another two main. One multiple well. CPU core. So play with it a little bit and then rotate, because I want you guys to all get a chance to look at all when we rotate, four of them, to shut them because they're totally different. And I want you to totally shut them down when you're done. Uh, feel free to change something if you want to and see how it saves because when you change stuff, change the date. That's the easy thing. Change the date or the time. You have to make sure you save changes and accept changes or you change did nothing. Time. Yeah, change the date or the time. It doesn't matter. And then we'll make sure the last person sets them right. I'm going to go check on Mr. Anderson. I think you guys can rotate on your own. Let's see. You are. No.